Hello everybody, welcome to the Group N Round 2 match between Call Troop and Bright. Very exciting Call Troop with humans. Of course, this deep this deep rule of five is set up he was famous for in the Season 2 Finals where he had an amazing run, finished third. Uh, Bright with the same build as Diomed, exactly the same build as Diomed. The Necro, uh, you know, another top Russian coach, so very exciting. I can show you on screen the table as it stands in Group N. As you can see, Ivan Colin beats Sipjin in round two. So if Bright wins, he will join Ivan Colin in the playoffs um, in the knockout round. If, however, Call Troop wins, then still anything could happen because, you know, Sipjin could lose all his games and everyone else could be 2 0 1. Or Ivan Colin could win his last game and the, everyone else could be 1 0 2. So, Bright has the potential to secure qualification here, and uh, a, wi a win or loss will be decisive one way or the other, basically. Um, that's pretty obvious, isn't it? But, you know, a draw, Coldrip's still vaguely alive with a draw, and I can tell you that Coldrip is Spanish and qualified through League Liga Super Blitz, there you go, from the LH League, and Bright qualified through the Rue BBL World Championship Qualifiers, and he also um, won ladder and won playoffs, so <laughs> pretty good. Kickoff was a quick snap, and let's him get back a little bit. We have very boring cheerleaders, sad. Oh, br brutal cheerleaders at least from uh, Cold Tree. I'm not sure about the colour scheme here. To be honest, it's alright. But... Double push. The wolf is exposed. Blitz is used, but he, is he going to dodge? Nope, he's going to bring in the guard to protect. I don't like using the blitz directly there. But The painted call troop deep rule of five, yeah. Let me move this guy. Gotta zoom right out to see the ball. Right in the end zone. I wonder if we'll see some like human speed trying to get around the side. Try and put some pressure on. Unfortunately, of course, he set up deep rule of five, so he can't do that as effectively as otherwise he could. Let's look at the teams. It's a human team, 14 players. That's a lot of players, isn't it? Um, three re-rolls and an apple. Very minimal guard. Like, well, I say minimal guard. It's three instead of five. I would have five. But, you know, a lot of tabletop is like a mighty blower and a tackler. Block on the thrower, block on the catcher. Um, I feel like... I would, 13 players would be enough for me, but fair enough. The halfling gives him a one turn chance as well. And uh, yeah, Bright is just exactly the same as Diamonds. Four guards, Block Wolf, a block and a wrestle ghoul, and 13 players total, three re rolls. So here we go. A mighty blow the fleshy. And it's an instant stun. Instant stun. Stuns up the Linos to get punched. 1D powers the wolf. If this is a Kaz. <laughs> 
Kaznor regen or a KO, just any kind of removal is just a nightmare. That's the problem, isn't it, with one wolf? Like, it's a nightmare getting a wolf removed when you've got two. If you've got one wolf, like, you're completely all in on, on it being protected. I really don't like how brittle that is. And the thing with Mighty Blow is the Mighty Blow makes your Blitzers like twice as good, right? And Tackle is not as good as that for injuring Dodgers. And really, if you hit the, the <laughs> Tackle to knock down a Dodger is really not as good as Mighty Blow removing the Dodger, right? So there are times you really want to knock over a Dodger, but those times that you really want to knock over a Dodger, that then you've got to have your Tackler there to do it. And you've got to roll the dice that makes his tackle impactful. And, you know, it's just, it's, you've got to have him in this right place. It's just so unlikely. It's just so unlikely. I really do not rate tackle for tabletop NAF style. Even though lots of people do, I don't. However, I can see in tabletop style, like in, you know, tabletop style on Blood Bowl 3 is different to actual tabletop. Because actual tabletop has Amazons. And if you've got Amazons, then Tackle does gain a fair bit of value, right? Because you have to knock over a Dodger every single turn versus Amazons. And, like, they're probably the best team in the game, so... so it is, that's, a big, that's a big difference from here to there. <laughs> Good point, BB. Good point. So lack of pressure by the humans on turn one. Now, um, Bright could move the ball up a little bit, right? And then if anything comes, it can get right into a cage. No, he moves it right up. Okay, wow. This is a bit rowdy. This is a bit rowdy because... We've moved it back into this kind of range where if this was a skull, that could have been a hit on the ball. Flip me. <laughs> Mighty blow black old spam is it's funny, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. So, cool. I I do not like it. I I I do not like the uh, bright and diamond build. Absolutely not. Goes again for the mighty blow on the fleshy hit. Doesn't get him. So all of his guards are plugged in to fight uh, fleshies, which it's a hard fight to win, right? Especially when the wraiths can maybe come and support them later. I feel like he surely has to get some threat round on the ball. I think it's tough though, obviously. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I get it. I get it, Diamond. I just don't <laughs> like it. Because the problem is, 
the, it's just like a huge single point of failure, isn't it? Like, if you lose the wolf, it's horrific. Whereas at least if you've got two, you can lose one, is not. I feel like losing the ghoul, the one ghoul, isn't as horrific as losing the one wolf, basically. But I kind of agree that I'd rather have two ghouls and one wolf. The problem is, that's, that's just not going to be, like, that's not the reality because you can lose one, right? Like, that's basically my problem, is losing one. I mean, that's why I took Wrestle on a Wolf, because I figured, you know, my one wolf with block can punch every time, and then my other wolf with Wrestle can go do things. Whereas Devo just went double block wolf. There's definitely pros and cons. But for me, for me, the, the, the thing is the, uh, I really value, like, redundancy. Yes, the two ghouls, two wolves and no bench is really risky, isn't it? That's obviously the most powerful, but it's also, like, the most risky, isn't it? Because it's very easy to lose somebody. Yeah, it is definitely hard to utilise both walls, yeah, yeah. Having two walls isn't really very good at all. But the problem is losing your one wolf is a nightmare. And yeah, you, you get into trouble by having two wolves sometimes as well. Like, I totally understand it. I'm just not a fan. I wouldn't say it's wrong. <laughs> I would just say I think it's <laughs> I think it's worse. I think it's worse. I think it's I think it's risky only having the one more. That's why I think it's worse. But Lots going on here, isn't there? Lots of free humans. They could... They could do something. Run around. <laughs> they could run around and do things. Two wolves does make surfing easier, yes. Yep. Things might happen. And this is the problem, right? With all these guards, I mean, he's only got three. With two guards there. Oh, look at this. He gets the tackle in the right place. Uses the tackle. Gets the knockdown. Does absolutely nothing. But it could have done something, couldn't it? It could have done something. But this is the thing, like, getting the knockdown there doesn't really do you anything unless you hurt it, right? It doesn't do anything for you unless you hurt it. And Mighty Blow increases the chance of doing something. Oh, he gets a power. A 1D power. A 1D power. Gets his uh, Rafer square in, but not out. Obviously, he has to keep him on the fleshy because he will never uphill power him uh, oh, like that. Wow. That was alright, wasn't it? I mean, it, it, it wasn't as stupid as it looked, right? It was a one in four to get the knockdown. Uh, but rolling double 
double <laughs> double pals looked fun but it was it was still pretty that was pretty rowdy because if this guy goes down there can be a whole acres of space opened up for the ogre here ogre is one of those ones where people really like to go for them <laughs> and, uh, it's not that crazy he could, he could go for the surfing uh, harder now but he could go for surfing the blitzer couldn't he Go sidestepper in there, definitely going for the the surf. Don't know why I thought it was. I don't know why I didn't think of putting the sidestepper in there. An idiot gets the push. Wait, what? What? Oh, he's gonna surf the tackler. Oh, of course. I'd rather surf the guard. But yes, now he just gets to surf the tackler anyway. So Apple's the KO. But now he gets to surf the tackler instead. Very nice. Doesn't get the surfing. Never lucky. Two rerolls, can't reroll it. Now I guess at least he gets to go back and protect him protect his wolf. Yeah, I guess it does make sense to, to like take the power and then surf him, even though I'd rather surf the Garda. It does make sense to uh take the knockdown and then surf the other guy, right? It's just more more hits, more removals. Make the three wolf. Well done, Dimmy. <laughs> yeah, very nice turn, yep. Everything, I mean, everything looks bad for the humans because humans aren't a good team. <laughs> it's not helping them. Gets full powers. Does the ogre try to 2D this lad? Stick himself on the wolf? Problem is if you get a push there, it's a disaster, right? If you just push him, then he can uh, he can go there. But you can't really serve him. No, maybe pushing him's okay. Just punch him. Or he could hit the fleshy. It's much less likely to do anything in the fleshy, aren't you? Like knocking this guy over. Or even just pushing him. Let's just stand on the uh, wolf is pretty good. I think. Yeah, Cheney is pretty OP, yeah. 
Well, this isn't easy, is it? Both both fleshies are tagged. So you can't blitz him with a fleshie and you can't use the guards. This guy is on the ground there, so you could get him around. You could just bang both of these guys and then put your wraith in. It's turn five, so he's got a bit of time. It's not completely desperate yet. What is going on with a human catcher's hands? <laughs> Could watch that all day. <laughs> that was a huge pow and A B break. Yeah, it gets back to the centre, surrounded by guards, very nice. Blitz with the fleshy and put the fleshy in. Okay. I was thinking this, you know, what, what's going to happen after he puts the wraith in, but. This is obviously better than the wraith as well for the hit. was the correct turn. Oh, okay. Wraith's coming in. So we can punch him. Well, this is a little bit... Uh, a little bit exposed, isn't it? We could one dice into a two dice into a run around and one deep how. <laughs> Yes, that sounds terrible, but as far as humans go, that's pretty good. Ah, oh, he's putting the guard in. Wait, not into both? He's not guard, he's mighty blow. Okay, errata, errata. Why isn't he a guarder? <laughs> I mean, yeah, the safe cage isn't that, un the, the base cage isn't that unsafe, right? You could only get a 1D blockless blitz, and only if you, like, rolled a 1D pow, followed by a 2D pow. So it was pretty safe really the backside, but I would have still gone for it. I would have still gone for a 1D pow into a 2D pow, just because, you know, I'm humans, and that's, uh, for some reason, somebody's forced me to take humans to the World Championship. <laughs> And I am stuck with humans in the World Championship, and that's the best thing I'm gonna get. Is is my but you know, obviously Cold Troop likes humans. He did get third place at the season two finals. Then they're, they're not for me though. Puts the assist for the two D, and then takes the one D. Oh, he was going to 1D, and then on a 1D pow, dodge and 1D? I don't know what he was thinking. He put the assist for the 2D into the 2D, and then took a 1D. Strange. Maybe just a misclick, right? Maybe thought, I'll, I'll do this punch and I'll do it. I've done that before. Didn't re-roll, just took the both down. Has two re-rolls for the one turn.
This is it's still actually a bit tricky, isn't it, for the uh, Necro to get through here. Not that tricky, actually, but a bit tricky. To get through with support, that's the thing, isn't it? They need to they need to flood through so they can screen the goo after he gets through. No, definitely not potato. You can definitely get through multiple ways with support. Gets the full pow there from the freshie. Lovely. And the AV break. Oh, I wouldn't have done that. But he gets the pow. My zombie would have punched this guy. And then my wolf would have blitzed through. And then get these through afterwards. But now he gets to double surf, <laughs> which is a lot better, isn't it? <laughs> he doesn't break through, but he does double surf. Like, it's funny, I would have been hyper-focused on breaking through, whereas just double surfing is obviously way better, isn't it? What's funny is I just didn't I didn't even like consider it. Oh I didn't see it, I just didn't consider it because I just thought you've got to break through, but I guess you don't have to break through. Cause if you destroy the entire defence, you don't have to break through, do you? So there you go. Yeah, well that was a turn six panic from me, absolutely. Absolute turn six panic from me there. Yep. That was definitely the right play from Bright. Yeah, I, I must confess, I didn't consider. Didn't even consider doing that. But it should have. Doesn't really roll now, he's just keeping his two rerolls for the one turn. I still follow the no search rule. I try to. Sometimes I surf. <laughs> yeah, maybe Dimmy. Honestly, that 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 was a fact as some people said, like they they didn't own like, you know, wood elves or whatever. That's why I didn't pick them. I feel like you know, you could buy them if it was for the World Cup rather than using humans. But Dark Elves, were Dark Elves base game? They were, weren't they? Mm. Yeah, Necro you gotta pay, Wood Elves you gotta pay. But Rats and Wood Elves are base game, I think. So yeah. That double surf obliterated the defence, so he could do this. So yeah, that was... Uh, maybe I need to not write things off so hastily. Reroll? Like it is a greed reroll, but yeah. Whoa, get the cars. Don't like hitting the not blitzer, honestly. I'll probably just hit the blitzer to try and bang him out at this point. 
On Coltrick would already use the the apple, hadn't he, on a KO? So the thrower, the block thrower, that kind of sticks. Pro reroll, yeah, no, I, I like I like that reroll because you got two. You you know you're not gonna need it on the last turn probably. So you know you might need one right if you roll some dice. You might need one reroll on the last turn. You're unlikely to need two. So yeah, it gives you the one in thirty six chance, but also you're hitting a dude with claw. That's pretty good to me. <laughs> Why jump to me? <laughs> Why do you want to jump all the time? 5 plus 6 plus 2D the ball. I mean, it's pretty bad. Isn't it? it's, it's probably the best play. But it's very bad. A 5, 6, 2, 2. A 2, 5, 6, 2, 2. 2D is pretty bad. Also, your rogue is your one turn, isn't he? So, you'll also be risking your one turn touchdown to do it. Can we 3D into 3D for the surf? Is the question? The answer is no. Do you 2D though? Probably. Oh, just blitzes the guard guy instead. You'll do nothing. I feel like doing this block first is better, right? And then if you get the push, you take the surf. And if you get the pow, then you blitz the other guy. So I do feel like that was better to do that block first. But Bright gets the score, minimum of fuss. Unlikely to lose right now, but we are going to see the halfling toss. No dance. Not much chance of a of a throw teammate. We've got two human teams and two all world alliance teams. No halflings, no goblins. I think we've got one orc team with Troll and Goblins. And obviously the Black Orcs of Mr. Page. It could happen. Nobody has made a throw team at touchdown in the World Cup yet, no. I like this this kind of formation to stop throw teammates, so I would go I'd actually probably go one forward, not one back and what he did there. No, no goblins or halflings, amazingly enough. Yeah, someone did kill their own player by throwing a halfling at it. Yep, yep, that was better. Hopefully he does the same versus me rather than just getting the throw teammate touchdown. I'd be happy with that. He was robbed of Play of the Month as well. I submitted it for him. And <laughs> he didn't get it. Diced.
Okay, it is a coffin corner kick. <laughs> brilliant. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. This is horrible because you want to blit, you want to block him and then blitz the fleshy. But then if you blitz with the ogre, it's three dice. Maybe you just blitz with the ogre. Uh, no. No, oh, I thought he would have been doing the blitz. He's just gonna rush. He's just gonna rush with the ogre. He can three dice though. Can he? Yeah, it's just four assists, isn't it? Oh no. I like the three dice ogre blitz. <laughs> or at least blitz with block, right? Could have blitz with block. He's gonna halfling foul? I think he has to, because he's got reserves. No, he's going to line off our... Um, the thick skull fleshy. He could have fouled the Wraith. Gets the KO despite thick skull. Huge 50-50. He stays out. Great foul for Coltry. A big old slice of equity. That removal. Christopher B. I mean, the problem is there's not going to be a potential one turn later, is there? Because, I mean, well, there is, but it's so unlikely that there's a potential one turn later. Oh, well, maybe he's going to go for the win. Problem is you. The problem is the, what a group this was for Cold Troop. Two orcs and Bright on Necro. Like that's horrible. That's horrible for humans. Like he could just hope to get the draw here and then win the last game. But um, yeah, it's really it's really hard, isn't it? Oh, Chrissy B. Yuddy, yeah, Yuddy might take uh, goblins to the World Cup, yeah. And kick. Gets the catch, thanks to the high kick and the catch skill. Blocking straight ahead. No. Maybe, maybe Cauldron's going to go for the win here. There's, there is a strong argument for it, isn't it, after losing the first game? I 
think Diamond going for the win was, I don't know, a bit more, let me just put this out of sight kind of move, whereas this is, okay, I'm, you know, my draw isn't really good enough, so I have to go for the win. Wow, he's really, really pushing up field here. A, a, this is tough because a bonehead ogre is horrendous for him, but so is not moving that guy. Oh, wow. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, he realised. <laughs> he has to get the hit, and he gets the pow. And everything's solved. Okay, so that was about as good as you could do now. He's got four scoring threats. He's got the ball protected. Um, nearly didn't. <laughs> nearly made a horrendous mistake, but uh, solved it. I guess Bryce just going to blitz the mighty ball guy, right? Over three minutes of time bank used for Bright. It was only 22 seconds for Caldry, but to be fair, I think Bright has used that time to find better plays. fella. Oh, pushing the push is a bit dodgy. Mm. I wonder if he should have run around. Did he have the movement too? Yeah. Probably should have run around right and done the first hit from here. So he could have pushed him there and then there. He's got a go anyway. Well, the left hand side is by moving the ghoul now, the left hand side is wide open, isn't it? For uh, call troop to either two or three turn score here. Because he's not two turning that. Because he was going to two turn. He's blocked his path. As he goes there. That's pretty perfect, isn't it? Puts him in scoring range without making any rushes. That's pretty good. Oh, this runs all the way around. Oh, so he hadn't really blocked his path. And he scores. I thought I had blocked his path. Stupid. Okay, so he scores in two. Going for the win. Fleshy comes back. So it is understandable going for the win after losing the first game. Completely understandable. Of course, going for the win really, 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 really puts you vulnerable to the loss. Um, even if you're necromantic versus black orcs. <laughs> so, I mean, there's, there's an argument for just going for the draw, right? And then hoping it's good enough. This is... Uh, this is really tough. Wow. There's no need to root for OWA, Denbeek. 
a bit mean. <laughs> you can root for these humans, but please, nobody should be rooting for Audible UA. They, they play tomorrow. <laughs> Is it called the coward argument? I don't know. I would call it the sensible argument. Um, it's not really coward, is it? It's about... Um, it's not really... Tree Man is rooting for Lord of the Rings. Like, the thing is, you've got, to, you've got to work it out, haven't you? You've got to work out the chance of you qualifying with a draw winner, like the chance of you winning the last game, the chance of you qualifying with a winner draw and a loss, the tiebreakers, estimate your percentage chance of victory and draw and loss and everything like that. And, uh, you know, I guess his calculation was he has to win this game. But, um, yeah, I mean, a lot of people are like that. But, yeah, if Bright wins, then, then Bright and... Uh, Ivan Colin qualified. Hello, oh, don't. Oh, don't to don. So I guess Bright would be pretty happy about that quick score. I mean, like, you know, don't know what percentage chance he is to win now, but it's. Probably pretty high. Probably pretty high. How good has Tackle been this match? Um, pretty useless. It got a knockdown on a goal that stood up next turn. <laughs> so yeah, pretty useless. Didn't really affect play at all. Like positionally, it didn't really do anything, whereas guard would have done. So yeah, I, I do not like tackle. Do not like tackle. I mean, this is this is exciting, isn't it? You know, what can call troop do? Yeah, I was, I was, I was, I looked right, I look right in this one, in that uh, it hasn't done anything. As opposed to all the other ones where I looked wrong, where it did things. But, the thing is, what you're not seeing is the impact guard would have over the entire course of the game, instead. Which could be bigger than an instant knockdown or whatever. Cheeky removal, thanks to Mighty Blow. Guard comes in so we can punch the uh, fleshy. You'll do nothing. Quite good having the ogre on both wraiths, isn't it? That is pretty good. I think that's Call Troop's signature move. He just likes the deep rule of five, and he's not going to. He refuses to do another setup. I mean, mighty blow. Mighty blow is pretty great. It's hard to argue with that. <laughs> yeah, the jump up tree. I don't know about directly how he yeti. <laughs> but um, certainly contributing, yes. Oh, that makes it almost certain that we're flesh, flesh golem blitzing. Mm. 
the ogre to try and get it away from the wraiths. Yeah, Chad ogre, yeah, that's for sure. Gets the full pow. Too deep. And another two deep. <laughs> a V break. And a stun. Oh wow. Massacred there. Call troop, two stuns, four knockdowns. Absolutely brutal. Barely gets a block back. Because, uh, you know, just lacking guard, right? Outguarded. Humans being outguarded by necrols is pretty rough for humans, isn't it? Pretty rough. <laughs> we want a shrubbery. Hello? It is looking, yeah, it's looking, it's looking rough for the humans. Definitely. Has to start making some things happening somehow. I'm mean, trying to make things happen. The dice are going to stop you. <laughs> All you can do is try to make things happen. Yes. <laughs> yes, it's rough versus anything. Yes, indeed. I mean, better versus elves, right? Well, I say better. Like it versus elves, he's not looking too bad actually. He got a really unlucky group, right? If he had been in, if he had been in, if him and Piebot could have swapped groups, right? And then if Coldrip had had two Wood Elves and All World Alliance to fight, not so bad. But um, getting two Orcs and Necromantic is. <laughs> Horrific. <laughs> but yeah, three guard would have been like enough versus Woody's and OWA. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like if he'd been if he could have swapped with Mr. Page, right, and he could have been in with uh two Dark Elves rather than two Orcs. I mean I'd still rather have Dark Elves than humans, but like he, he could have had better racial matchups, but rather than two orcs. That was dreadfully unlucky. And and yes, I mean the the necro matchup for him isn't good either. Hmm, interesting blitz. <laughs> yeah, anyone could have been Christopher B. <laughs> Imagine, imagine getting the auto qualification of being in the three knob group. Wow, what a time to be alive. Dimmy would just be muttering some nonsense about them being OP. <laughs> As you won every game, guaranteed. Four. This is much better for Bright now, isn't it? Having both fleshies on the ogre. Oh! Oh! Well, well, well. Does that help? Maybe, maybe we could get a 1D on the ball here. With tackle. Maybe.
<laughs> it's possible. I mean, that would have been possible, whatever the result of that block. Like, I don't think the result of the block particularly helps him. Yep, Tackle could literally win the game right now. Do the organ jump, let's flip me, Jimmy. You can tell you're a full table topper now, obsessed by jumping. <laughs> If he, hits, if he hits this wraith, it stops the uh, <laughs> it stops the one day. But I mean, I don't know if he's going to go for one day or not. And he might not want to go for the one day. I think it stopped anyway. I think he had to block this guy. I think he had to block this guy, right? Because yeah, he's blitzing this guy. Might as well. He had to block this one with this lineman. So that he could go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, rush, rush. So he'd have had to have powered this guy, basically. That's pretty brutal, isn't it? Two, two knocked over fleshies, just got to stand them up. Knocked over Wraith. That could have been a reroll there from a uh, call troop, honestly, because like, if both wraiths are knocked over and both fleshies are knocked over, you know that's a bit of a pickle, isn't it? Oh, I really like basing like the wolf there, right? Come on, base the wolf. I feel like he's got to do something here out right, of only three turns. This is like score, go for the win, and then not even like push for the win, right? <laughs> I just end up looking at the catcher all the time. Look at his hands. <laughs> This is a, I mean, this is a tricky turn. I, I would have liked to have seen the catcher come over this side, maybe, and then maybe the lineman base the wolf. Yeah, because that's like that's then that's both things, right? Like, if the lineman comes and touches the wolf, to make it annoying. That, this lineman could have been down there and then uh, this catcher could have been out here and then that's shutting down both ways really One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I mean we've got a hit on the ball right now makes the, ru the dodge I don't know push. makes the dodge can he come around the other way? yes We've still got the uh, 1D on the ball. Makes the 4 plus dodge. And makes the 3 plus dodge to secure the backside. Wow. Wow. Gotta feel a little bit sorry for Call Troop there. But again, you know, he really could have put the catcher around. I think you have to put the catcher somewhere this side, right? Because that's that's the only way he can go. So you had, to, I think, you had to put the catcher somewhere there last turn.
You can still get round the back. Like one, two, three, four, five. Uh, maybe not. Maybe this guy could have got round the back. One, two, three, four, five. Six. Yeah. Sneaky raid scoring threat. Wolf not so sneaky scoring threat. The ghoul's in range, isn't he? And four in. So he could just go for the touchdown, but I mean, that seems insane. Bright's definitely thinking about stalling this out. That was huge, though, the 4 3 dodges. Without those, we'd have seen a 1D on the ball with tackle. Like that 1D. Freeze up the other guard. Does he stand in front of this ghoul? No, he rushes in. Hello, poopy scoop. Um, yeah, everything's pretty glorious, thanks. Oh, he re-rolls that. He had great re-roll discipline this half call troop. Finally uses the re-roll and it fails. That must feel bad, mustn't it? After watching Bright 3-4-3 three, three last turn and then the first thing, the first dodge you do fails. Horrible. That's Blood Bowl though, isn't it? That is Blood Bowl. I'm gonna surf the tackler, I guess. Oh no. Wow, this doesn't look anything like safe. Maybe he is going to rush in and score. And trusting his defense to stop the two turn. Like, Bright only really needs a draw, right? So, I think he will just score here. Oh, maybe he won't score at all. He does score. Well, still a two turn for Call Troop to get the Tuddy. And yeah, maybe throw the Halfling. Okay. This is quite good, the halfling now, right? Because <laughs> Bright has to defend this properly. And uh, might just get the halfling toss. He is putting these, he is going for the halfling toss. I feel like committing this much to it is a mistake. Because you can just two turn normally, right? You could just two turn. I feel like the best play is to, you know, get the heart, get the ball up here, get some people through, and then turn 16, 
you can hand off and throw, or you can try and do something else. Yeah, but that's what I mean. Like it's less, it's less like he's setting up for that when he when he had the blitzers back. Right now he's got the linemen back. It looks a lot better, but he's still got the catcher back. Catcher wants to be up front if he's going for a two turn. Yes, I mean, yeah, like the 13th ghoul is, does happen sometimes, you know, it does happen sometimes, the 13th ghoul, the 13th zombie, like the 13th player, does matter sometimes, especially in overtime. Like, I don't think that the, um, I don't think that, like, I don't think the one wolf roster is terrible or anything. Especially with overtime, right? Especially with overtime means you, you, you've very much got a chance of having, unless you could foul as well, right? Like it's, it's, it's just obviously better having thirteen players than twelve. There's no argument there, and I'm inclined to agree that a ghoul is better than a wolf. You know, with minimal skills. But um, the problem is all eggs in one basket. That's the problem. Cheering fans. Okay. Well, he, he's caught the kickoff. He can just give it directly to the halfling and lob him this turn. Well, he's blitzed this guy, so that looks like exactly what he's doing. Because that's a horrendous blitz if you're trying to two-turn. So, we're absolutely going all in <laughs> on a halfling throw. Has to re-roll that, because... The halfling's exposed right now. Like, he could go for a two turn halfling throw, but you might as well just lob it now, eh? While you can. Well, then you get two turns and lose anyway. Still hasn't put somebody in front of the halfling. Like, definitely could have put this guy in front of the halfling, right? Because he could have another chance to throw him next turn. <laughs> oh, he tried to re-roll it! You've got two turns! Oh, no! Oh, what are you doing?! <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Oh no! I, did he not know it was turn 15? Nobody had to because these guys could have been back deep. Like, he definitely could have put stuff in the way and, like, there would have been a chance. More chance than none. <laughs> Sorry, Rondo, Calrissi. Well, there you go. That means that Bright and Ivan Colin have made it through to the knockout stage. Well, some people do, that's a lack of, some people just run the guy forward, right? Like, see it all the time. People try, like, a one turn and they don't get the pushes and then they just make the make the rushes anyway and stand, like, two squares away or, like, they, they get something and they just run it forward. I feel like he didn't know it was, he had another turn. I feel that way. Maybe not. But maybe he just gave up. Maybe he was like, screw this. Who knows? Um... 
so there you go. Uh, I can put the table before the matchup, and what this means is um, now with two wins, Bright and Ivan Colin have both definitely made the knockout stage, and Sipjin and Coltrup have both definitely been eliminated. So commiserations to those two. Congratulations to Ivan Colin and Bright, and obviously in particular for this match, Coltrip and Bright, respectively. And uh, yeah, so the, the final match will see who wins the group between Ivan Colin and Bright. Thanks for watching, everybody. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and stay fantastic.